Well, perhaps this year, one of your New Year's resolutions is to have a better all around character in your life. If so, then you're in agreement with a group of educators in Putnam County. That and nine other stories comprise the top 10 list most watched Faith and Friends interview stories. Here are the 10 most popular. And coming in at number 10 is the Converge Prayer Rally that brought hundreds of teens and area adults into Limas Town Square for an afternoon of prayer and praise. It was later reported that crime was unexpectedly low in Lima that very weekend, despite unseasonably warm temperatures, which often encourages higher crime activity. Number nine, local dancers participate in the Nutcracker. 60 area ballet dancers were chosen to dance with the Moscow Ballet Company in a one-time performance at the Lima Civic Center. The girls spent seven weeks preparing for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. At number eight, Guy Penrod comes to the Nice Wonger to be part of a crusade to focus on stroke awareness and, even more importantly, salvation awareness. FCA Leadership Camp gets the number seven spot. Looking forward to another group of local students experiencing that leadership camp again this year in Liberty Center. Linnea Diller, Throwing for God, the state champion thrower, talks about who inspires her to be her best in her sport. The Ohio State thrower gets the sixth highest spot. Number five belongs to Tim Tebow's Night to Shine, special needs prom held at the First Assembly Church of God. Another event is planned for this year, February 10th. Guy Penrod makes a second appearance in our <laughs> top 10. When we shared his thoughts on music, salvation, and reaching the lost, you all responded. That episode was the fourth most watched video of 2016. And at number three was Jennifer's interview with local youth Lauren Cunningham, a cancer survivor and blood donor advocate. Number two on our most watched video list, the Midwest Volleyball Championships, the second largest homeschool volleyball tournament in the country, takes place in Fort Wayne. This past fall, the Allen County Junior High team won their division. And finally, the most watched Faith and Friends video of 2016, well, it's today's In the Community segment, as Dancy Moeller talks with Ottawa Elementary Principal Dean Brinkman about the importance of teaching students character traits. Here again is the interview that talks about why it is so important to include character as part of a complete educational plan. Well, you were doing some great things in Ottawa, and um, it's a town and a community that you know well. You grew up there. Yes, ma'am. And um, you want to see better things for your community, and you're maybe taking it from a different approach than um, you know some school administrators might do. So. Let's talk about what the Titan Pride program is all about. Well, the Titan Pride program is something that uh, my staff and I came up with uh, last year, and we really wanted to work on character education. I think uh, the role of schools nowadays is obviously the academics and creating a safe environment, but also I want to try to instill the values and morals into students so that they can become productive members of our a community in our society and, and hopefully they get that sense that we are part of a community and they can give back uh, to their community um, through the, the values and morals that we are teaching at Ottawa every day. You're seeing maybe some um, some pieces missing in sure. the students today? You can say that, yeah. Okay. And, and I think that's really important. You know, some of the things that we talk about, we have 23 essentials at OE, that's what they're called, the, the, the essential 23. And they talk about honesty, they talk about respect, they talk about conversation skills. So looking each other in the eyes when you're talking to them. When you greet an adult, call them Mr. or Mrs. Shake their hand when you meet them. Hold doors open for, for young ladies or, or other people. But also in a school setting, we're talking about uh, some different values that they can uh, develop as well, such as you know, before answering, make sure you're raising your hand and you're called upon. If another student is struggling in class, encourage them instead of making fun of them. You know, don't expect rewards. Don't make excuses. Uh, so these are things that I know go on at home. These are some of the values and morals that are instilled at home. But my sense is that there's no such thing as a, a value-free or a value-neutral school. We have to teach values in any school system. Mm -hmm. um, and, and teachers do it every single day. And if we don't teach values, if we don't teach morals, then what we're teaching the kids is that values aren't important. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to reinforce some of the things that are going on at home. And for the kids that may not get enough of it, um, we're introducing it to them, and hopefully we're making a big difference in their life. 
Um, a couple of things struck me that you said, you know, when you were talking about addressing um, your other parents or teachers as Mr. and Mrs. Mm -hmm. That is something that I have noticed has changed since I was in a student. Um, now parents actually say, oh, just call me Dancy and, you know, sure. drop the Mrs. Mm -hmm. But I think we've done our children a disservice in doing so. And, and again, it may be a little hokey, you know, 1950s, 1960s type of culture of Mr. and Mrs. and yes, sir, and, and uh, no, ma'am. But I think it's really important. What it does is it creates a culture of respect. Right. And it doesn't matter what culture or what socioeconomic uh, classification you're from or what religion you're in. Every one of those demographics, uh, they honor respect and trustworthiness and, yeah. and uh, fairness. So those are the types of things that we're trying to create. I may be wrong, but I, I feel like when a, a student needs to call an adult Mr. or Mrs. Yes. I think that's really important. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're trying to start when they're young. And what's kind of neat about it, each of the students, K through eight, is put into one of five houses. Uh, and each of the houses compete every single month uh, for rewards. So the five houses are some of the five tenets of what we try to promote at OE. It, it stands for pride. So purpose, our purpose is to learn. Respect, we must respect each other. Individu individuality, you know, respect each other's individuality and treat others like you want to be treated. Mm -hmm. Determine to do your best and set high expectations for yourself. So there's five houses, each house has their own color. Each house is made up of a lot of different grade levels. Um, so if you're looking at me in the eye right now, now as a teacher, I would give you a Titan ticket. So oh, here you go, your hey, own Titan ticket. All right. And the students would go through and they would put their Titan tickets in their house. And every day we, we update the, uh, the score, I guess, uh -huh. uh, in the school. And then at the end of the month, we have a house assembly where we're split into our houses and we have little competitions uh, and games and we reinforce some of the essentials that we're going through each month on the announcements, reinforce the essentials every day. And to see the immediate impact is so rewarding. Yeah. When I walk down the hallway now, kids are looking me in the eyes. They're saying, you know, one of the things we say is when somebody asks you a question, you return uh, you say, you answer them, then you return with another question. Mm -hmm. So now I'm looking at kids and they're smiling in the hallways. They come up, they shake my hand. They say, hi, Mr. Brinkman, how are you doing today? And they respond back, fine, you know, how are you? So yes. this is the small things that make a big difference. Well, you know, and in today's world, um, you know, <laughs> I'm feeling like my grandparents did because, you know, we sit around and talk about, oh, the Back degradation of society <laughs> and, and how, you know, nobody can have a conversation face to face anymore because you can just text someone sure. and it's immediate. You don't even have to care about your spelling or, you know, grammatical, um, you know, punctuation, anything like that. And, and, um, so I think it is important. I, I love the thought that you have to have follow up with a question. Mm -hmm. That's how conversation sure. goes, right? Yep. Yep. So yeah, that's huge. And are you, are you planning and hoping to see a change then um, migrate into the classroom when it comes to their academic performance? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I think they, they, they go hand in hand. And what we've seen already, you know, some of the things we talk about is responsibility and making sure you're turning in all your work and making sure that you do your very best on every test. Um, and I think we have seen, and if it's not an academic necessarily, we are seeing some changes behaviorally. And I okay. think it's just, it's going to happen. It's going yeah. to affect, if, if you're more disciplined and you're more courteous and you're more respectful and you, and, and you have a more respectful environment, yeah. academics are going to make a change for the better. Um, and this does, I mean, this has an impact on, on all, all students. It doesn't matter if they're a straight A student or a, a, that's right. you know, a student that struggles. And the thing that we teach is, you know, God has given you a lot of different gifts and we just need to uh, take advantage of those talents. And all I ask of our students every single day is to do their best. Yeah. And that's all we can ask for. All of the past Faith and Friends shows and videos can be found on our website, faithandfriends.wtlw.com and on the WTLW TV YouTube page. And of course, you can share those on your social media pages. We encourage you to share those as much as you possibly can.